Welcome to Brutal History Channel, subscribe to see more of our videos, turn on notifications and give it a like. Craziest Dictators You Never Knew Adolf Hitler takes the title for most deranged dictator no doubt, but these guys here are fine examples of the world's craziest dictators you have never heard of. Picking just seven craziest dictators in modern history is, unfortunately, quite a task. There are so many of them to choose from, from the atrocities they committed to the bizarre and comical nature of their actions. Number 1. Sapa Murat Niyazov of Turkmenistan. How can one compare as crazy, Adolf Hitler's extermination of more than 6 million people to someone's decision to name a country's capital, airport and streets after himself as well as changing the names of the months, including one for his own mother and one for the title of his book. Sapa Murat Niyazov of Turkmenistan is often cited, as one of the world's most deranged dictators. Among his actions after naming himself Turkmenboshi, meaning, leader of all ethnic Turkmen in the world and declaring himself president for life in 1991, Niyazov set out to create a new image for his country of 5 million, by quite literally making it a country, in his own image. He authored his autobiography and made it mandatory to be read in schools, universities and new government employees and applicants are tested on the book, on his teachings. He erected a $12 million golden statue of himself, that rotates to any direction, to face the sun. A despotic leader of a country rich on oil wealth, glorifying himself whilst the population gained no benefit is definitely madness. Giving Narcissus a run for his money, Niyazov, named landmarks, streets and other public entities after himself, Turkmbashi. He also changed the name for the month of April in his country to Gerben Sultan Edge, in honor of his mother. Even bread, a common food staple was also renamed Gerben Sultan Edge, after his mother. Until his death in December 2006, Niyazov ruled with an iron fist, passing a series of bizarre laws onto his hapless public, his face was legally required to appear on every clock, watch and his own brand of vodka. The country's youth were encouraged to chew on bones to preserve their teeth, instead of seeking dental treatment. Rural libraries were closed to discourage people from reading. It was forbidden for the young men to grow long hair and beards. Plus, car radios, lip-syncing and recorded music were prohibited, among other verboten actions and items. Can you guess the most fitting item, named in his honor? No. A meteorite. When a 670-pound meteorite landed in Turkmenistan in 1998, scientists named the thick, destructive mass, Turkmenboshi. Number 2. Idi Amin Dada of Uganda. Anyone who has seen Forrest Whitaker's Oscar-winning portrayal of Idi Amin Dada in The Last King of Scotland, knows that the Ugandan dictator from 1971 to 1979 was mentally unstable. The deaths of military leaders, civilians, politicians and scholars under his brutal regime are estimated to be between 80,000 and 500,000. The Butcher of Uganda as he was called had a penchant for making people with opposing views disappear. No one knows for sure the exact number. After a particularly bloody coup in 1971, Armin's system of torture and massacre, coupled with his erratic behavior and provocation of other world leaders, led many to publicly denounce Armin as a madman and a buffoon. Reports circulated that Armin, ate his enemies and even fed them to crocodiles. In 1977, the UK broke all diplomatic relations with Uganda, and Armin declared that he had defeated the British, and added CBE to his title for conqueror of the British Empire. Of the Republic of Uganda, and also I am speaking as a great man who is the conqueror of the British Empire. Among other titles, he declared himself King of Scotland, a completely baseless claim, as well as President for life. His full self-bestowed title ultimately became, His Excellency, President for Life, 
Field Marshal Al Haji Dr. Edi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, CBE, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas, and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. In 1972, Amin ordered the expulsion of about 50,000 Asians resident in Uganda. It is said that his motivation for banning all Asians from Uganda stemmed from being rebuffed by the daughter of an important Asian family. I think they will be sitting like they are sitting on the fire. I will tell you this. You just wait after three months. What will you do to them? Okay, you will see. <laughs> Armin's maniacal legacy also includes writing love letters to the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> After being ousted from power in 1979, he died in exile in Saudi Arabia in 2003. Number 3. Nicolae Ceausescu of Romania. Many of us remember the scenes and broadcast, from Romania, on Christmas Day 1989, when Romanian General Secretary and the country's last communist leader, Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena, were hastily tried, and then immediately and publicly executed by a firing squad. This is, after nearly a quarter century in power. By that time, Ceausescu had fallen out of favor with the Soviet government as well as any Western allies he may have had. He was known as the communist, other communists loved to hate. Ceausescu ruled Romania from 1965 to 1989, and was considered eccentric, and tyrannical, even among the rulers of the Eastern Bloc. The closest equivalent of him is Kim Jong-il, and like Kim, Ceausescu formulated the combination of Marxism-Leninism, with extreme nationalism, appropriately called national communism. Like other megalomaniac dictators, Ceausescu was fond of giving himself titles such as, Conductor, Leader, and Genial din Carpati, the genius of the Carpathians, etc. The Romanian media, portrayed him as the secular god, the prince charming, the saint, the genius and the morning star etc. Ceausescu and his wife were largely uneducated but his wife held a PhD in chemistry, and had multiple honorary doctorate degrees, from multiple national and international universities. Her husband, Ceausescu, also held such numerous degrees. She was made a leader of Romania's, chemistry research team, even though, she could barely read and write. By 1974, he created an executive presidency and even had a scepter made for himself, like that of kings, which was later mocked by world-renowned artist Salvador Dali. Among some of his more outlandish actions, whilst poverty and disease were widespread in Romania, in full view of a watching nation, he destroyed cultural and heritage sites by pulling down 19 ancient churches, 6 synagogues and 30,000 homes for the poor, to build a palace to himself that required the work of some 700 architects at a cost of $10 billion to the Romanian people. Even after its completion, when it became a venue for Romania's parliament, less than half of the building was used. For years, Ceausescu insisted that HIV was not sexually transmitted. He banned contraceptives, thus condemning many innocent people to needless early death. Number 4. Kim Jong-il of North Korea. One only needs to watch videos of the forced public mourning in North Korea after the death of Kim Jong-il in 2011, to see why North Koreans are considered to suffer under one of the world's most repressive and totalitarian governments. People who did not display just the right level of histrionics, feared a harsh reprisal against them and their families, so, they were forced to put on a show of sadness, for a man they should have detested, and who continued the tyranny of his equally unhinged father, Kim Il-sung, for 17 years. During his reign as supreme leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, until his death in 2011, 
Kim had up to 200,000 political prisoners sent to concentration camps in a country that woefully lacks freedom of the press. Religion, political opposition, and equal education. Psychiatrists have said, Kim demonstrated the same diabolical characteristics as men like Hitler, Joseph Stalin, and Saddam Hussein. Professional opinions aside, Kim may have been deemed crazy by his actions alone. While his people starved under economic sanctions, Kim lived a life of luxury with a 1,000 bottle wine cellar and special flights, from Japan, that brought the island's most expensive cuts of sushi, directly to Kim's expanding belly. It has also been reported that Kim spent $20 million, importing 200 new Mercedes-Benz luxury sedans to North Korea, just to satisfy his lust for expensive cars. One of the most bizarre aspects of the late leader's cult of personality, were beliefs circulated through his official biography, according to the text, North Korea's dear leader, neither urinated nor defecated, and had the power to control the weather. Wonderful. Number 5. Mama Gaddafi of Libya. Some people simply point to Muammar Gaddafi's wardrobe, as evidence of his lunacy. Time magazine had its sartorial hackles raised when Gaddafi appeared at the 2009 opening of the African Heads of State Summit, in a bold yellow ensemble. Said the magazine, the outfit was great for hiding mustard stains. Gaddafi's unconventional attire often drew more ridicule and laughs than the nonsensical rants he launched into, when he held the world's attention at various state meetings. But Gaddafi was no one to laugh at during his 40-year rule of Libya. A flamboyant Colonel Gaddafi, frequently pictured with female bodyguards who wore camouflage fatigues, red nail polish, high-heeled sandals, and carried submachine guns. He was an autocrat condemned for the violation of human rights in his own country and for his support for international terrorism, including the bombing of the Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, just before Christmas in 1988. President Ronald Reagan had declared Gaddafi, to be an international pariah and the mad dog of the Middle East, early on in his presidency. Mad dog of the Middle East has a, a goal of a world revolution, Muslim fundamentalist revolution. Under Gaddafi's control, Libya was essentially a police state that practiced surveillance and torture on its citizens, persecution of native Berbers, Italians, Jews, foreign workers, and mass murder, like the killing of 1,270 prisoners in 1996. After years of tyrannical rule, the so-called brother leader met his demise in 2011, after civil war caused the government to crumble and the leader was captured and killed while fleeing from his city, Sirt. Number 6. Saddam Hussein of Iraq. The question of whether Saddam Hussein was insane, will likely be debated by historians for many years. Former Iraqi official Tariq Aziz, once the foreign minister and deputy premier under Hussein, has gone on the record to say that the president of Iraq was mentally unstable when he decided to invade Kuwait in 1990. Others would describe Hussein as a malignant narcissist. This is a personality disorder in which people afflicted are grandiose, self-centered, oversensitive to criticism and unable to feel empathy for others. Hussein is said to have based his regime on the time when the Soviet Union's government was ruled by Stalin, one of Hussein's heroes. The two men never met, but some have observed that they look very similar, particularly in images as both kept the same moustache. Among the more bizarre stories about Hussein that have surfaced since his defeat and death in 2003, was his decision to have large amounts of blood drawn, so that he could have a Quran written with it. According to those involved with the Macabre project, the leader had blood removed regularly, over a two-year period. The result is a 605 page of the holy book transcribed with 27 liters of Hussein's life force. Another discovery that was more a testament to excess than insanity was Hussein's collection of grenade launchers, pistols and assault rifles made from gold. No gold weapons of mass destruction were unearthed, however. Number 7. Francisco Macias Nguema, of Equatorial Guinea. Being president of one of the least known countries in the world, Nguema is without doubt one of the craziest and frankly, 
evil dictators to ever come to power. He was responsible for the deaths, or exile of at least a half of Equatorial Guinea's entire 300,000 population, resulting in the nation being bestowed the nickname, the Dachau, of Africa. Ngema's murderous urges included the dismemberment of his director of statistics, for offering figures that displeased him and the murder of all former lovers of his mistresses. Any time his government ran out of money, Ngema kidnapped foreign diplomats, and tourists from whom he then demanded ransom. Forms of torture, and murder he liked to employ included. Crucifixion. Being made to run around a fire until exhaustion, before having your skull crushed. Being buried up to your head, near a red ant hill. His most disturbing acts perhaps, was ordering the mass execution of 150 opposition members in a football stadium on Christmas Day, by soldiers, dressed up as Santa Claus whilst the speakers played Mary Hopkins' song, we Those Were the Days. Ngema's insanity didn't stop there. The word intellectual was abolished in Equatorial Guinea and all libraries were closed. People who wore glasses were thought as being intellectuals and were murdered. Western medicine was banned for being un-African. Ngema's portraits were everywhere, including on the currency bills of all denominations, and on all postage stamps in Equatorial Guinea. Ngema eventually banned religious meetings, but not before forcing priests to preach that, there is no other god than Ngema, the official national motto of Equatorial Guinea. God created Equatorial Guinea, thanks to Ngema. Without Macias, Equatorial Guinea would not exist. He often used hallucinogens and went insane as a result, adding to his already ridiculous dictatorship. He would go on to mine the only road out of the country, ban all fishing boats and declared himself the unique miracle and grand master of education, science, and culture. His home was a bamboo hut in his ancestral village of Mongomo, but Ngema made it into his treasury, burying the entire country's national treasury under his bed. This is after murdering his central bank director, when he tried to prevent him from embezzling funds. Electricity would only be switched on in the capital city when Ngema paid a rare visit to the city, from his country hut. By 1979, his government had garnered condemnations from the United Nations and European Commission. That summer, he organized the execution of several members of his own family who enjoyed government positions, leading several members of his inner circle, to fear that he was no longer acting rationally. On 3 August 1979, he was overthrown by Teodoro and Gemambasogo, his nephew, who is today, Africa's longest ruling non-royal head of state. Truly. Madness runs in the blood. Which of these dictators do you consider the most crazy? Do well to comment your opinion below. If you consider our videos entertaining, as well as informative, do well to subscribe, turn on notifications and smash the like button to help the algorithm. Thanks for watching and see you next time.